Uh, Coach Norvell talked about Ryan and said that, you know, you guys believe in him and, and <coughs> still have confidence that he's going to turn it around. How is he handling this? Because it just can't be pleasant when he's not performing the way he expects to perform. And then, you know, he probably hears the crowd and things like that. How's he handling all that? Um, you know, he, he's take, he's a guy that just like all of our guys, I would imagine, take a lot of pride in his performance. Um, when he doesn't do well or doesn't do as expected, it, he certainly takes it to heart. Uh, you could see it on his face, um, you know, following the game the other night, uh, you know, and, and I talked to him a little bit after the game, but was trying to give him a little bit of space. But then, yet, you know, yesterday he came back just like all of our guys did and um, ready to continue to work and, uh, you know, had, had, a, had a, what appeared to be a good attitude, got some work in yesterday. Um, you know, so obviously it's, it's not an easy thing that, that he's going through, uh, but he's doing the best he can to work through it. Uh, block out all the the noise that isn't beneficial, and, and just focus on on trying to get better every day. And um, you know that that's really the message for everybody is just um, keep pushing forward and and build on the things that have been positive and and correct some of the things that haven't, and and you know be better tomorrow than we were today. How will you evaluate, I guess, the, the kicker position moving forward? Because Ryan had a really good week of, of practice, and so you see that. But then the game obviously is a little different. So I guess how do you play what you're seeing in game versus what happened, say, this week in practice? I mean, that's a great question. You know, that, uh, you know, we continue to evaluate the position to the best of our ability. Um, like you said, the thing that made it probably makes it a little bit trickier is he, he has performed really well in practice. You know, last week he had a great week of practice. Um, so, uh, you know, it's one of those things that that it we got to continue to build him, you know, physically and mentally to. to be at his best, just like we do with every position player, and um, you know, continue to evaluate and make make the best decision for the team. Mike has obviously done a, a good job um, since he's been here, but you know, he he had some plays on offense, and then that play, uh, his return, which was spectacular. Um, is he a guy you think can be a game changer? You know, in, in that role as well. Yeah, I mean, I felt like. Um, you know, last week when you know when we were here, um, you know, I, I think I made the comment that we're not far away from him really popping one on, on punt return, and um, we're even, in my opinion, that much closer. Um, you know, we're probably one one block away from from that, probably getting back to the house. Um, he did a great job. Guys did a phenomenal job uh, for the most part getting it started, because uh, that's typically what you need. You need a way to get it started for your punt returner and then get him in the open field. And uh, once he was able to get in the open field, he was able to make somebody miss. But, um, you know, I, I do feel like our, our punt return unit can be a weapon for us. And, uh, you know, Micah, Micah does provide a spark. He's, he was he was uh, pretty fired up coming off the field after that return. And then you see how he plays on offense and on the other special teams units on kickoff return. I mean, he's, he's a guy that every single play, you know, he's going out there to try to make an impact. And uh, I appreciate and respect the way he plays the game. That, that that wasn't a that was an unlikely punt return because there was a guy right on him as he's catching it. Normally in this day and age, those are fair caught. Did yeah. you talk to him about that afterwards? Like, um, what, was he just ready to go return one? Because I, we, he he's fair caught a lot of those similar types of punts. What made that one different, where he was willing to catch it and go? And what? did it, you think it surprised the the coverage team that he actually started returning the thing? Well, you know, a couple things about about that. Um, one is I think he was was being aggressive in the moment, you know, feeling like, hey, we needed some kind of spark, and I, and I think that's his personality and that's his attitude. But also, you know, um, if you look at, if looking back at, at it from a replay standpoint, uh, Malik McLean did a phenomenal job on that guy who was coming down on him, and Malik had leverage on that blocker, like so. Malik's body was in between the cover guy, and. Uh, you know, so I think Micah might have felt or, or at least seen that, um, that Malik had pretty good leverage and had a chance to get it started. Um, you know, it's, it's when, when you don't have leverage on, the, on, the, on your blocker that he would be more likely to fair catch. I think he, he kind of made a good risk-reward decision there. And, uh, you know, I, obviously Malik did a great job on the block. Kentron did a really good job. Sidney Williams. I mean, there were some guys on that play that did a really good job. Zari Thomas. Um, so... You know, it allowed it to get started. With D Mac and Jared being limited, you know, the, the savvy vets got a lot of run out there with uh, Briggs and, and Leonard. Uh, Leonard seemed to play really hard. I know you guys had a lot of expectations for Dennis. Uh, is he maybe starting to find some form here as we kind of hit the halfway mark? And how vital is it that 
you know, maybe he does find that extra gear as, as you guys hit the home stretch here. Yeah, you know, I, we, uh, we were a little bit limited last week uh, in terms of rotation and, and how it was going to go. I thought Leonard did a really good job um, with what we asked him to do. He stepped in, played hard. And I felt the same way, thing about Dennis. You know, the, the, the thing with, with both those guys is their skill sets are, are going to be a little bit different. You know, all, all the guys are a little bit unique. You know, Dennis and, and Leonard are, are going to be physical at the point of attack. Uh, they're going to be uh, solid transitional pass rushers. Um, you know, like I kind of mentioned, I think it was last week, you know, Leonard's not going to have the highlight reel probably pass rush, um, but he's going to be consistent in everything he does. And, and Leonard and Dennis are very similar in that, that regard. Um, when it comes to, to just kind of his, his continued growth and development, you know, we want to keep pushing, you know, for him to be a, an every down defensive end. But he also has the ability to help us inside. So having that swing ability is a, is a valuable um, you know, asset for, for this defense, especially with where we're at at this point in the season, being a little bit nicked up on both inside and outside. I understand that you probably have become accustomed to seeing Jared Hurst play with a ton of energy, but just what he went through this, this past week to get ready and available. And as a coach, like, see how is that special to you to see how he performed on, on Saturday? Yeah, he, you know, he, he's a guy that since, since he got hurt, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, um, he's attacked the, the, the rehab process. You know, he's, uh, works extremely hard every day. We get the reports from our training staff in terms of how how the progression's coming, and uh, every single day, you know, whether it's the doctors or the trainers, they they talk about how hard he works in, in terms of trying to get himself back and healthy. And uh, you know, I think he has a great sense of urgency to get back on the field. Um, and and I was happy for him because I know leading up to game time, it was a game time decision. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to feel because he didn't he didn't really practice during the course of the week. Um, and, and for him to be able to go in there and make the impact that he made in, in the 22 or the 23 plays that he played, I thought, I thought was impressive. And it speaks a lot about who he is and, and how much determination he has uh, to be successful here. When you're, uh, I guess, evaluating what you want to do with young players like Patrick Payton or some of those young defensive linemen in general, um, you, you, I guess you just know they're going to make some mistakes. And, and is that getting decreased the more they're getting uh, playing time? Yeah, you know, at least in reference to Pat, uh, he played a very clean game um, the other day. He didn't make it really make, I'm trying to think if he made any mental errors. I don't think that he had any. Um, you know, he plays hard. He's getting better every time he's out there. Um, you know, Pat has a knack uh, to be productive. Uh, and some guys have it different than others. You know, I mean, Pat finds himself around the ball. And, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a quality that you can't always put your finger on exactly uh, what makes that happen for him different than other guys? Um, but he has good instincts. He's a good football player. He has a good feel for the game. He knows when to take a chance and when not to in terms of within the scheme and maybe a little bit outside of it. And um, you know, I think he's starting to develop confidence, which which leads to 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 going out and playing fast. And um, you know, I've liked I've liked his progression over the last couple of weeks and. We need to see him continue to stay on this path because if he does, um, I think you know really good things are going to happen for him and for us. On the evaluation of, of like Ryan and, and Aiden, if if Aiden has just as good of a week as Ryan, are, are you guys at a point where it, it's worth giving Aiden a shot in game, or does Ryan's not his recent past, but his, maybe his past last season that's still a tiebreaker for you guys when it comes to using in a game? Yeah, you know, I, I think all of it will be taken into account. Um, you know, like. like like Coach said, I mean, uh, that we're evaluating all positions. And um, you know, we'll take all the information that we have from the past, all the information that we have present, and, and where we see who gives us the best chance going forward and, and uh, you know, come to a decision, uh, obviously, as the week goes on. But um, you know, we're going to continue to evaluate, like I said, and, and put our team in the best position we can possibly put them in. Because of the offense wake runs, I'm guessing some of the Lack of what we see as pass rush what might have been guys trying to stay in control and, and not be as aggressive, um, especially in the first half. Is that is that accurate? And then how much are you looking forward to playing maybe a more traditional offense where the guys can kind of get after it a little bit more? Well, you know what what Wake does is is certainly unique. Um, there is a lot of RPO element to it, so. Um, you can't just run up the field as a defensive end, especially uh, because then if you do, obviously you're creating seams in the run game. Um, I think as as we got a better feel 
for the pass setting and, and the rhythm of the game, uh, we were able to get a little bit more aggressive in, in the second half in terms of our pass rush. Um, but that, that offense certainly poses challenges from the way in which that, that they execute their RPO game. Uh, and it does kind of slow down the pass rush a little bit, especially in those, those transitional pass rush downs, first and second down. Um, you know, the second part of your question in terms of get you know happy to play, you know I think I think our guys are, are going to just be happy to get out there and play again on Saturday regardless of who it's against. Okay. Thanks, coach. Thank you guys.